seven types of drugs that are often confusing. How can we identify the drug names? Most of the times we can identify the drug names by their suffix. For example, we have a suffix like pril which indicates they are ACE inhibitors. So drugs like captopril and listopril belongs to this category. Similarly, if we have a suffix like sartans, they are the angiotensin receptor blockers. For example, drugs like losartan and olmisartan belongs to this category. But sometimes few of the drugs are having similar suffix but belong to the different categories which are often confusing. So we will see here such type of drugs which are having the similar suffix may be confusing. So the first one is a vancomycin versus streptomycin. Vancomycin is one type of drug whereas drugs like streptomycin Neomycin, gentamicin, kenamycin, and tobramycin are another set of drugs. You can observe that both of these drugs are having a common suffix mycin. But actually, vancomycin is a glycopeptide antibiotic, whereas streptomycin and other drugs are belonging to the aminoglycoside antibiotics. So these two list of drugs are having the similar suffix but belong to the different categories. Even in their mechanism of action, both vancomycin and streptomycin differ. Vancomycin is the drug which blocks the cell wall synthesis, whereas streptomycin is one of the drugs which blocks the protein synthesis. So even they are having the common suffix, they belong to the different category, thereby different mechanism of action. Let us go to the second type of difference, erythromycin and streptomycin. Erythromycin, clarithromycin and azithromycin are one category of drugs, whereas other drugs like just we have listed out streptomycin, neomycin, gentamicin, kenamycin and tobramycin are other category of drugs. Again, all these are having a common suffix, mycin. You can observe in these type of drugs. But the first list of drugs belongs to the macrolide antibiotics and the second list of antibiotics belongs to the aminoglycoside antibiotics. But if you carefully observe, you can find a small difference in their suffix. So the first list of drugs are ending with the thromycin, but the second list of drugs that is aminoglycoside antibiotics are ending with the mycin. So a small difference is there in their suffix and if it indicates thromycin, they are the macrolides and only mycin, they indicates aminoglycoside antibiotics. Again, these drugs differ in their mechanism of action. Erythromycin is one of the drug which inhibits the translocation in the protein synthesis, whereas streptomycin is an aminoglycoside antibiotic which inhibits the codon anticodon pairing. Even both drugs are acting on the protein synthesis, their target of action is different. Now, third pair of drugs which are often confusing, omeprazole versus eripiprazole. Both of these drugs are having a common suffix prazole. But omeprazole is a proton pump inhibitor, whereas eripiprazole is an atypical antipsychotic. In this way, even these drugs are having the same suffix, they belong to the different categories. Next one is the simvastatin versus silastatin. Drugs like simvastatin, lovastatin, etorvastatin, rosuvastatin, pitavastatin, and pravastatin. All these are commonly called as statins because of their suffix or one category of drugs. And another one is the silastatin is in another category of drug. So all these drugs are having a common suffix statin. But the first list of drugs are used to decrease the LDL cholesterol and commonly known as statin drugs. Whereas silastatin is one of the drugs which is used to prevent the breakdown of the imipenum in the kidney. Actually, silastatin was developed as a real statin to decrease the cholesterol, but later it was found that it is mainly preventing the breakdown of the imipenum in the kidney. So it is used along with the imipenum to increase its survival within the kidney. 
and simvastatin is one of the drug which is going to inhibit the hmg coa reductase enzyme whereas cilastatin is the drug which is going to inhibit the renal dehydropeptidase enzyme thereby prevents the breakdown of the imipenum within the kidney so these drugs even they are having the same suffix they belong to the different categories with the different mechanisms of action fifth one propranolol versus sotalol Drugs like etanolol, metoprolol, propranolol, and timolol are one category of drugs which are beta blockers, whereas a drug like sotalol is a potassium channel blocker. You can observe that again, all these drugs are having a common suffix LOL. But if you carefully observe, again, a small difference can be identified. The beta blockers are ending with the suffix OLOL, whereas this potassium channel blocker is ending with the LOL. With the small difference in their suffix, there is a chance of confusion while we are remembering these drug names. Sotanol is actually a beta blocker as well as a potassium channel blocker. Because of the beta blocker activity, the suffix LOL is retained. Since it is not a pure beta blocker, it is not given as the complete suffix like OLOL. It only uses the LOL in its suffix. Sixth one, omeprazole versus clotrimazole. Drugs like omeprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole, and rabeprazole. And another category of drugs are the clotrimazole, iconazole, miconazole, and ketoconazole. You can observe that all these drugs are having a common suffix, azole. But the first list of drugs are proton pump inhibitors, whereas second list of drugs are the azole antifungals. And again, if you carefully observe, the first list of drugs are ending with the suffix prazole, whereas the second list of drugs are ending with the suffix azole. Seventh one is the amyloride versus amiodarone. Actually, these two drugs does not differ by their suffix, but because of their similarity in the target, they may be confused. Amyloride is one of the drugs which is acting like a potassium sparing diuretic whereas amiodarone is one of the drugs which acts as a potassium channel blocker. So both are going to target the potassium, but amyloride is going to increase the levels of potassium in the body by acting as a potassium sparing diuretic, whereas amiodarone is blocking the potassium channel, thereby inhibits the potassium mediated hyperpolarization. Then these two drugs are having the similar prefix like AMI, so they may be confused. So that's about the seven category of drugs which are having the similar suffix or similar targets thereby they may be confused while we are dealing with them.